Welcome to In the Word with Roy Edwards, where we dive into the timeless wisdom of the scriptures with your host, Pastor Roy Edwards. He is the senior pastor of Redemption Church in Casa Grande. Service times are Sundays at 9 and 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, check out www.redemptioncg.org. Prepare to be uplifted, encouraged, and challenged by the Word of God. Let's jump right into the message. Thank you for joining me for 30 Days of Prayer. Let's jump right into it. Today is day 17, and uh, I'm glad that you're, you're jumping in and learning about prayer and praying with me today. Let's jump into Isaiah chapter 38, verse 5. It says it like this in the New King James Version. Go and tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father. I have seen your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. Wow, what a powerful moment. We, we have a king here in the book of Isaiah who has been told by the prophet Isaiah to set his house in order because his time is short and he's going to die. But Hezekiah turns his face to the wall and he prays to God with all of his heart. And God responds in a way that teaches us a whole lot about prayer, repentance, and the mercy of our God. So let's unpack this a little bit and see what it means for us today. So Hezekiah was in a desperate situation. We've got to understand the context. Hezekiah, Hezekiah was the king of Judah. He was a righteous leader in many aspects. But you've got to understand this. Like all of us, he faced trials. At this moment in the story, he was at the brink of death, having been told by Isaiah to prepare for the end of his life. Isaiah's message was simple. Hezekiah, you're not going to recover from this sickness. Now imagine receiving that news. You've served God. You've done your best to follow his ways. And now you're being told your time is up. That could be a very heavy burden to bear for anybody. But what does Hezekiah do? Instead of crying and getting upset and pitching a fit and getting mad at God, he prays. He turns to God with a broken heart, and he prays for deliverance. So the takeaway is this. In moments of our greatest need, where do we turn? Hezekiah turned to God. And can I tell you today, we must turn to God too. And that was the best decision that he could have made. In our trials, prayer should be our first response, not our last resort. The, the second piece of that, he says, God hears and sees. <laughs> he tells, God tells Isaiah, here, this is the message I want you to give to Hezekiah. And here's what he says. I have heard your prayer and I have seen your tears. Can I tell you today, God hears and God sees. Sometimes we feel like our prayers fall on deaf ears or that our tears sometimes go unnoticed. But this verse reminds us all that nothing is hidden from God. He knows every word we speak, every tear that we cry. He sees the pain that we endure. He sees the struggles that we face. And he sees the brokenness of our hearts. For Hezekiah, it was a matter of life and death. But God is so compassionate. He's so full of grace that he responded to Hezekiah's cry with love. The takeaway here is God is always listening to us. He hears the prayer that we utter in quiet. He sees the tear we shed when nobody else is watching. And don't ever think that your prayers are in vain. Like Hezekiah, you may not get the answer immediately, but God is paying attention. The third piece there, God didn't just acknowledge Hezekiah's prayer. He acted on it. The Lord says in the, in, the, in the verses that follow that, the Lord says, surely I will add to your days 15 years, 15 more years of life. Imagine receiving that kind of extension directly from God himself. This wasn't just a random number. It was a tangible sign of God's mercy. God didn't have to do it. God is sovereign. 
His will and his way is perfect. But he chose to show mercy to Hezekiah, I believe because he prayed earnestly and he sought God's face with tears. The takeaway is this. Maybe you've experienced moments in your life where you felt God gave you a second chance. I sure have. Maybe it wasn't as dramatic as the extension of your years, but perhaps it was a restored relationship. Maybe it was a new opportunity or he led you out of a dire situation or he just gave you peace to walk through a situation. Our God is a God of second chances and he delights in showing mercy to those who seek his face. Part four is applying Isaiah 38, five to our lives. Listen, let me give you three quick points about applying Isaiah 38, five to us. Never underestimate the power of prayer. Hezekiah's prayer changed his life. And no matter how hopeless your situation might seem, prayer can move the heart of God. James 5.16 tells us that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So keep praying even when things look bad. Number two, God sees your tears. Whether you're in a season of joy or pain, God knows and he is intimately aware of your situation. He sees your heartache, he sees your frustration, he sees your fears, and don't you dare think for a moment that he is distant or that he does not care. Number three, God is merciful and gracious. Sometimes we feel like we've run out of time or that we've made way too many mistakes, but our God is a God of grace and he can extend our time and give us new opportunities and restore what has been lost. So just like Hezekiah, we have access to the throne of grace. And no matter what you're facing today, I pray that you would turn to God because he hears, he sees, and he responds. Pray with me, would you? Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you that you hear our prayers and you see our tears. And God, just as you extended Hezekiah's life, we ask that you would extend your grace and favor into our lives too. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would help us to seek you in all things and to trust your goodness and your plan. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May his love surround you, his spirit guide you, and his grace cover you today and always in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening today to In the Word with Roy Edwards. We pray you've been encouraged and challenged by the Word today. Be sure to follow Pastor Edwards on social media, YouTube, and you can also listen to these messages on any podcast platform you consume content. Just search for In the Word with Roy Edwards and enjoy. We will be back next week with more messages to encourage you in the Word.